Good afternoon, everybody. We're live from beautiful downtown Boonville, Missouri. Um, it's hot and sticky in Missouri right now. Uh, we're under heat advisory, have been for a few days. So uh, we are going to talk about in this class, and I apologize if I get kicked off. My router has been wonky this morning. So right now we're doing fine. Uh, we've got good frame rate per second. And we're going to talk about <clears throat> N-acetylcysteine, or NAC. The title of this is I Want My NAC, so you can sing that to I Want My MTV if you want. But <clears throat> NAC is about to be not available. It's still legal to sell uh, over the counter for now, but uh, my medical colleagues, there's a government entity that they call the Fraud and Death Administration. That is not my term. I'll leave you to figure out what that means. Um, but they have made a move uh, on NAC availability as a supplement, either as a standalone or as one that um, is in combination uh, with other uh, uh, supplements. So if it's a supplement, if it's part of a supplement combination, uh, they're trying to make that so that it is only available by prescription. And they're doing that with a little thing called the drug, ex drug exclusion provision within a certain food and drug and cosmetic act. So it's... An article authorized for investigation is a new drug and antibiotic or biologic. Uh, or for which substantial, substantial clinical investigations have been instituted and for which the existence of such investigations have, made, have been made public and which was not before such approval, certification, licensing, or authorization marketed as a dietary supplement or as a food. Okay. So they started issuing warning letters last July to about, I think, seven manufacturers that provide over-the-counter NAC. <clears throat> so first of all, let's talk about what it is. <clears throat> so the letters came out, came out uh, and this government entity one, wants to limit the availability of NAC and dietary supplement products. It is a key uh, precursor, NAC, to the key anti, uh, and to the key antioxidant glutathione. Uh, and this supplement is widely recommended by functional medicine neuro, uh, and uh, naturopathic uh, practitioners. It has lots of helpful benefits. Uh, so it's components in liver support and detox, longevity promotion pr protocols, anti-aging, lung support, and infection and inflammation. So there's three amino acids that, is, that are required to form glutathione in your body. <clears throat> and NAC is an essential amino, well, L-cysteine is an essential amino acid, meaning you have to, if you can't make it in your body, you have to either supplement or ingest it through your diet. So <clears throat> there are really over 1,500 supplemental products that contain NAC, and oral NAC supplementation is an effective way to boost cysteine levels for which you can make glutathione. Okay. <clears throat> so there's 150 structural and functional claims for NAC-based products that are filed with that government entity. They've been on the market for decades. None of those uh, claims of structure and function claims uh, have drawn prior objections from this particular agency. So beginning in July of last year, uh, uh, warning letters were issued to companies marketing NAC products as hangover cures. <clears throat> so the notion that NAC can mitigate the ill effects of drinking one too many is questionable. So their initial action was probably reasonable. So you can't really recommend a supplement as a treatment. That's a drug. But benefits, functional claims that have been filed for years, uh, are reasonable. So the quote from this agency is they haven't concluded that NAC products are excluded from the dietary supplement 
definition under a bunch of sections. Uh, so if an article such as NAC has been approved as a new drug under Section 505 of this Act, then products containing that article are outside the definition of a dietary supplement <clears throat> unless before such approval that article was marketed as a dietary supplement or as a food. So back in <clears throat> September of 1963, NAC was approved by this agency uh, for treatment of uh, a couple of different medical things, and it's still being used in ERs for treating acetaminophen or Tylenol overdose. Okay, so it can be used pharmaceutically. The companies that made that pharmaceutical, the pharmaceutical version, have quit making that for quite a number of years. So the agency is referring, referring to a position or reverting to a position that NAC is a pharmaceutical ingredient based on an approval of 58 years ago. And this is despite the fact that that agency and other regulators have permitted its use in, suppl its use in supplements for over five decades. And then this position was amplified when Amazon announced its intention to eliminate all NAC containing supplements from its digital sh uh, shelf. So intravenous and oral NAC is used in hospitals to reduce liver damage by acetaminophen intake. It's used as a mucolytic in the treatment of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and that was the indication for which it was originally approved. Okay, it's also used in tracheotomy care. It has not proven effective for treatment of cystic fibrosis, which is a buildup of mucus <clears throat> that occurs because of a chloride problem. Okay, so let's review why they did this. All right, so it has a long history of first aid remedy for acetaminophen poisoning. So we've done that again. We've, I've told you that three times. <clears throat> and so it recharges glutathione in order to reduce the toxic effects of overdose of Tylenol. And it may also be useful, based on several, quite a few studies actually, in, tr uh, in prevention and treatment of a certain infection that's been running around for a year and a half that is not a bacterial infection, but more importantly, we're just going to talk about infection and inflammation in general. So by, re uh, by raising glutathione levels, NAC combats oxidative stress. And if you've listened to my classes, chronic inflammation, reactive oxygen species, free radicals, oxidative stress are the basis of most inflammatory and chronic illness problems. And so a recent literature analysis linked glutathione deficiency to the severity of this infection that we're talking about, leading the author to conclude that NAC be, may be useful for both prevention and treatment. I ran across an article published in the uh, NCBI and the NIH website specifically talking about this specific supplement uh, treating a specific infection that we've all heard tons and tons about. So and that was from 2020. I want to say March of 2020 is when that, <clears throat> is when that uh, NCBI study was published. Most of the original branded pharmaceutical NAC products that were approved by this agency were discontinued many years ago. There are some generic versions still available. Um, so the Amazon purge has happened. It's still, I think, available at Whole Foods, which is owned by Amazon, if you didn't know that. Uh, but <clears throat> the brand that everybody's looking for is not on the shelf, and that's led to a significant unavailability of NAC as a supplement. Life Extension still has, and I'm an affiliate for them, and I'll put up a direct link to their NAC supplement when I get done, and then I'm going to put together a a list on Fullscript, my dispensary on Fullscript, on where you can find NAC from different companies until it's not available anymore. So why did they do this? Why now? <clears throat> why, why, why now are they doing it? So an agency which still does not have a confirmed commissioner yet has chosen to take action in the middle of a pandemic to limit consumer access to a harmless amino acid compound 
and, a, and an antioxidant precursor. So there's no real downside to taking NAC. It's not going to hurt you. You follow the bottles, instructions, the manufacturers. Um, <clears throat> and they've had the opportunity to raise this issue for 50 some years. They've never done it until last summer. And as of June, I believe, I can't really confirm this, I believe that they have banned NAC as a supplement. It's still for sale, but going forward, once you know nobody's going to make it, if you can't buy it, right? So you have to have a prescription to get NAC. <clears throat> so if some in the supplement field uh, see this as a broad federal crackdown on non-pharmaceutical approaches to managing certain infections. So the Institute of Functional Medicine for Functional Medicine's task force for this infection including, included NAC in its tr uh, treatment guidelines. So when you say treatment, that makes it a drug. Recommendation for supplement to improve um, antioxidation is fair. <clears throat> so there's no clinical studies to show that NAC will reduce symptoms or improve outcomes. There are human studies showing that this supplement can reduce episodes of influenza and flu-related symptoms, especially among elderly people. <clears throat> so once again, we're a year and a half, almost, we're getting close to two years, where there is no approved treatment for this infection, and certainly no supplements for which <clears throat> prevention can be made. So lots and lots of letters going out to um, hundreds, if not thousands, of companies um, as well as to practitioners making certain related claims about certain infections. So there's right now 17 clinical studies of NAC in the context of this particular infection care. It's listed in the clinical trials registry, registry for the government. Uh, there's a study underway at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center uh, using this supplement. Uh, there's a study at Baylor College of Medicine using NAC supplements. And last year, there was a pharmaceutical company called Orpheris that ran a phase one open label clinical study of subcutaneous injections of this, um, <clears throat> of this um, infection. And then the data was posted to clinical trials. So this company's long-term vision for their subcutaneous administration is to develop, as, develop it as a treatment for childhood cerebral adrenoleukodystrophy, big bunch of words, and then they'll assess the ability of that preparation to restore microglia in the brain to a normal state, and they'll do that with neural imaging techniques. So they're looking at it for a treatment, pediatric treatment specifically. <clears throat> so some supplemental industry leaders believe that it's not a co coincidence that this agency is squelching the sale of these supplements at the same time as several drug companies are developing new patentable prescription forms of the compound. <clears throat> so there's a guy named Steve Mister who is count, uh, president of the Council for Responsible Nutrition states that this agency is attempting to, quote, cast a shadow on NAC as a dietary supplement, which would encourage, encourage pharmaceutical companies to go forward under the thought that they could get a monopoly on the ingredient. Uh, on the ingredient. So the agency we're talking about makes this a prescription-only amino acid, basically, supplement. Then all of a sudden, <clears throat> it's patentable. So it's taken several specific actions um, to try to avoid this problem. Um, and varying the degrees of success in the past on red yeast rice and vitamin D6, and then of course there's CBD. So CBD is another one that if somebody gets a patent on like what it does. So let's look at it in inhibition of replication of influenza. So NAC was studied and tested in a six-month human study of influenza, randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial. There you go, 262 people. That's what everybody wants. That's the gold standard of uh, medical and, sci uh, and medical science research. So half of the subjects, 600 milligrams of NAC a day. Other half received 
placebo twice daily for six months. Uh, and NAC was found to improve immune function and reduce the severity of influenza infections. So both groups had similar infection rates with the H1N1 virus influenza, but 79% of placebo-treated people had symptoms and only 25% treated with NAC were symptomatic. <clears throat> so the number that needed to treat so that's called the NAT number in the study. Number needed to treat cited in, in the, the study so for every, it was 0.5. So for every two people treated with NAC, one would be protected against a, a symptomatic influenza. So symptoms from influenza. So one out of two. So that's better than influenza vaccines. The number needed to treat or to vaccinate is 71, meaning that's import flu vac. So 71 people must be va vaccinated to prevent a single case of a confirmed influenza infection. It's even better than vitamin D, which you've heard me preach about for a year and a half. The NNT number needed to treat for vitamin D for influenza is 33. And so even though, even with those that have severe vitamin D deficiency at baseline, taking vitamin D still had an NNT of 4. So you have to treat four to prevent one infection. So how does it do this? NAC inhibits the expression of pro-inflammatory cytokines in cells with the influenza virus. Now notice I'm not talking about the other one. <clears throat> so the antiviral and anti-inflammatory mechanisms of NAC was inhibition of oxidant-sensitive pathways involving tumor necrosis cells, the uh, interleukin-6, interleukin-1 beta. There's a bunch of science <clears throat> that we could go through that we don't need to really. <clears throat> okay, then reviewing the aims that are, or the problems that are coming from this agency. So how does it do that? So to fully understand how NAC might protect, there's a little quickie less lesson on biochemistry that we'll run through. So when you add an electron to oxygen molecules, you get superoxide, which is a reactive oxygen species, also known as a free radical. And then when you add another electron to oxygen, for a total of two, you get hydrogen peroxide. And then an oxygen molecule with three electrons added becomes a hydroxyl, and then oxygen with four electrons, electrons added becomes water. So superoxide plays a crucial role in the oxidative stress associated with comorbidities and chronic inflammation and chronic infection, including obesity, which is a hormone disease, remember, heart disease and diabetes. But then oxidative stress is kind of at the heart of serious infections with this particular infection that's not a bacteria. Your body has a built-in defense mechanism against oxidative stretch, stress, which includes an enzyme called superoxide dismutase. Sorry, we're having a physiology class. And that converts, so uh, SOD it's called, converts damaging superoxide into hydrogen peroxide, pride, hydrogen peroxide, and then catalase converts hydrogen peroxide to oxygen and water. And then glutathione peroxidase does two things at once. It reduces hydrogen peroxide into water and then it converts the reduced form of glutathione into glutathione disulfide, which is the oxidized form of glutathione. So <clears throat> as that enzyme turns hydrogen peroxide into harmless water, glutathione becomes oxidized, and then oxidized glutathione is recharged and regenerated by another thing I won't get into because it's not a human physiology class. If you want, if you want to take that, <clears throat> I'm starting again. October, I'm starting again August 24. <clears throat> so certain, certain serious infections trigger a perfect storm of superoxide-driven oxidative stress. Okay, and then there becomes a deficiency, which inhibits superoxide, and that allows superoxide to superoxide breakdown, and that allows superoxide to accumulate further. So this is a down, downward spiral, spiral that's been shown to be inhibited by NAC as it boosts glutathione formation and oxidation. Okay. So when you add two 
GSH molecules and hydrogen peroxide together, you end up with oxidized glutathione and harmless water, and that alleviates oxidative stress. NAC also reduces a lung injury, including pneumonia, acute respiratory distress syndrome, and there's a variant of this particular infection that looks like that. Uh, those are com common characteristics. It's also been shown to speed recovery and reduce intensive care unit stays and reduce the need for mechanical ventilation. And this goes back to ARDS studies that were published in 2017 as a meta-analysis where patients were treated with NAC even though there was no significant difference in short-term mortality risk. So if you're in trouble, you're in trouble, and the mortality, it's not going to potentially save your life. And then in 2007, uh, there was a study that concluded that NAC improves adult respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS, by increasing intracellular glutathione.